Hello everyone, this is Jimmy, and welcome to episode 20 of Levitated. Last episode, we got ourselves to the Overworld, which we found to be a, another Void World, and uh, started the process of rebuilding it. Today, I would like to continue along those lines and see if we can um, get ourselves some machines that should make that process better. So, the big thing I want to work towards is the Void Ore Miner, because the Void Ore Miner Tier 1 takes an incredibly long time to do its job. The whole purpose of the Tier 1 Void Ore Miner is, well, it gets you ores, among other things, but it doesn't, it, you know, not very, uh, not very good at it. It only gets you basic ores. Um, the real thing you're after from the Void Ore Miner Tier 1 is this Erodium Crystal. But off the top of my head, I think it takes the... Well, this is used to make the Tier 2 Void Ore Miner um, and other Tier 2 stuff. But uh, off the top of my head, I think it takes something like 18 hours for a Tier 1 Void Ore Miner to make enough Erodium to get to Tier 2. So, um, yeah, about that. We're probably going to have to move this world to a server at some point. Right now, I've been playing it in just single player. But uh, that's probably not going to work with the inclusion of... What's this mod called? Environmental tech? A lot of environmental tech is shut up and wait. So um, we're going to have to get the system set up and then wait. Anyways, before we can make the Void War Miner, though, we need to set up a bit more infrastructure with the uh, Tech Reborn. We started the process of making refined steel. Right now we're making here in the Arc Furnace, and it's both a little bit expensive. Three steel ingots makes two refined steel ingots. Um, takes a fair bit of power. It's slow. This takes coke dust and calcite. Lot, lots of lots of bad things about it. I would like to wake our way towards being able to make refined steel directly from iron in a industrial blast furnace. But before we can do that, we need a few other machines. The quest I think is actually already unlocked, but I don't think we can quite get there. So in order to make this an industrial blast furnace, first of all, we need an industrial blast furnace. But we also need to make um calcium carbonate cells let's start with the calcium carbonate oh nope just kidding this also needs a blast furnace let's start with the blast furnace all right um i think the furnaces are easy to make oh this is just an iron furnace but we need to make electric circuits all right so for the time being we make electric circuits in our assembler but i would like to upgrade to make it in the assembly machine reasonably quickly um Everything we need to make it in the assembler, we can already do. So let's go to over to look at the assembly machine. It requires four circuits, aluminum plates, and a basic frame. Okay, so I think if we make our first four circuits in the uh, assembler, in the extra utilities assembler, we can swap over to this. Our assembler is already our... What's that thing called? Yeah, it is an assembler. It's already hooked up to the Planet Energy 6 system, so I think we can just have... It do all the item movement for us now to actually use this assembling machine to make circuits it's a two-step process we have to make circuit boards from the difference here aluminum or refined steel well, i will use aluminum to make the um basic circuit board and it takes a fair bit of time so uh in order to or, uh, that's the first step the second step is combine the circuit board with wires and this takes a fair bit longer um I would like to make the the speed upgrades. I think they're called overclockers. Yeah, because that will speed this process up considerably and keep me from going insane. So I think uh, I've just tried to drop this recipe in and see uh, see what it all takes. We might need a... I don't have an automated water bucket filler yet, do I? No. Well, I technically don't have a dedicated water bucket filler, we can use our Magma Crucible Fluid Transposer combo to fill water bottles by melting something, in this case ice. And with that, I think we should be able to make overclockers. Each machine can only accept four. Oof, it uses... Oh no, those are ten, never mind. Only four refined steel. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, but each machine can only take up to four overclockers. With four overclockers, I think they're about... 16-ish times faster than normal. So uh, those these operations here that we were looking at that were taking like 40 seconds, it'll still be a little, you know, it won't be instant, but it won't be horrifically slow. I hope. Tech Reboard is also an IC2-based mod. Like, it's, it's not actually IC2, but it's based off IC2, which means, do we get the machine back when we pickaxe it? If we don't, I'm cheating myself a machine in. I hate you, Tech Reborn. 
I absolutely, positively, beyond a doubt, hate your guts. I don't know why mods still do that nowadays. Because of that, we now need to carry around a wrench to pick up tools. I don't know, does Tech Reborn allow us to use other mods wrenches? Okay, at least it allows us to use other mods wrenches. In that sense, you are better than I see too. That's setting the bar terribly high. Anyways, um, let's just set this right here. And put our upgrades in. Does it say how much energy it uses? 2k a tick, but that's energy charge rate. I don't know. Let's um just try it out. So what is the recipe for this in there? Let's start by doing aluminum plates and electric plates. I uh, may have misestimated how long it takes for this assembly machine to run. It's um, instant. These recipes, with the full overclockers, these recipes that stated that they took, what, 80 seconds? Take one tick? Um, what exactly is the config for, uh, for this? Which one would be under? Miscellaneous? I'm not actually quite sure how to interpret this. The overclocker speed value is 0.25, which means if each overclocker quadruples the speed, then having four overclockers is, uh, let's see, 1 4th, 1 16th, 1 64th, 1, 1 2 56th, or, you know, 1 over 256 times the processing time. It's about what we're observing. This is one that confuses me more. The power multiplier is a value less than 1, so it uses less power more power i don't understand point is it's fast though um in fact looking at how fast this is i think there's a couple other machines that uh we could replace with type of machines so i'm sorry i yelled at you for being not pickable with a with a wrench also i still think that's kind of stupid but um with the plate bending machine it's a five second recipe right you think five seconds that's way too long our compactor is faster but if we put some of those upgrades in it this thing is cooking um, it's actually so incredibly fast that our item conduits are the bottleneck, so I'll probably have to buffer the output. Turns out there's also an easier way to have that assembly machine put its final product back into the ME interface. It's configured the output here. The conf slot configuration is the weirdest thing. So first you pick a slot, and then you pick what can, you know, whether you can input in or output into that slot for any given side. And even the input slides you can set output to, which is kind of weird. Uh, I'm a little... A little bit curious can i oh, i guess they're smart they're even smart inputted slots um give me a aluminum plate can we extract from the input slots if we set it to extract i don't like i i can't think of any other reason you would let your input slots be configurable to extract right but uh let's give it a shot Does that work yeah Okay, so I guess technically your input slots are extractable if you want them to be, but um, that's neither here nor there. My point was, you could uh, set the output side to be the side with their ME interface, and then set auto output, and then that'll uh, eliminate the need for any external item movement, which is really nice when your machine is this stinking fast. So anyways, plate machine to make plates really stinking quickly. There's still a few compactor recipes that are unique to the compactor. I don't know if we'll ever do them, but like the making the rods from the dust. Um, and as a result of that, I don't think we can take down our compactor yet. But as far as when it comes to making plates, if I just ask for, I think aluminum is here, 100 silver plates. It, I forgot to set the sides on the uh, machine. So anyways, it, it is a bit annoying that you have to configure every single, um, like configure, oh yeah, that's so fast. Configuring the sides is like, you have to do it for every single machine and it's this wonky UI, but whatever. I'll deal with it because you give me machines that, that run at the speed of light. Next up on our journey to the industrial blast furnace is the advanced circuit. Um, in fact, let's pin all the other things we need so we can get rid of that. The advanced circuit, the advanced machine frame, which is carbon and advanced alloy plates, cooper nickel coils, and these we can make. All right, um, start with the circuit. So these are made in, it's just a whole bunch of uh, assembly machine steps, but nothing here is particularly expensive. Can we make silicon? We have green. Make that out of silicon ingots. Wow. Advanced circuits might actually be cheaper than 
playing played all circuits. Funny enough. Here's the total cost for 20 advanced circuits. It's like half a stack of gold, half a stack of silver, 20 pieces each glowstone lapis of silicon. Yeah. I think these are actually cheaper than basic circuits, funny enough. All right, whatever. Um, next up, carbon plates. How can we do that? Compactor, a carbon brick, or compressor carbon mesh. So this is, let's see, four coal. So it's eight coal to make a mesh, or a compact, a brick is six charcoal, but technically my charcoal is not automated. But I do have plenty of wood. Let's do the charcoal one. I guess this is another reason. This is the reason we kept our... Uh, Compactor up. Next up, the advanced alloy plate is made in a compressor. That's fast, but we have to make this advanced alloy ingot, which is smelted. That's easy. Uh, in fact, this I think I should duplicate. In fact, both of these recipes I'll make them in batches of 16. But there's uh, multiple ways to make this ingot. There's 12 whole pages. The If you use more basic materials, you get less ingots. And as you use more advanced materials, you get more ingots. So I'm going to look through this a bit, find a nice mixture of, you know, stuff we have a lot of, like zinc, probably a poor choice. Don't have a lot of that. On the other hand, titanium, poor choice. But invar, brass, aluminum? No, brass uses zinc. Um, I'm sure we can find something that's a nice middle ground of stuff we have and produces a decent yield. Invar, bronze aluminum this one i like this one lastly the cooper nickel coils are very easy to make it just requires a rolling machine and aside from the fact that this is going to use 24 pieces of uh refined steel to make i think that's no big deal so the rolling machine's a little awkward to automate because it um oh I don't even have 24 pieces of refined steel left. All right, uh, but anyways, I'll show you why it's a little awkward to fully automate once we have one. But for now, I guess I have to make one more batch of refined steel the hard way. Looks like while the refined steel is processing, we use 25,000 RF a tick, which is a bit more than we could have produced without the rainbow generator consistently. So I'm glad we... Uh, no. Yeah, I'm glad we were able to get the rainbow generator running. 25,000 a tick off of just another star generator would be a little bit difficult. The rolling machine is very similar to the very, very old rolling machine from um, Railcraft, if you know what I'm talking about. But um, each of these recipes, like it has a 3x3 crafting grid in it. And when you put items in, it doesn't, uh, they might actually, there might be some amount of smart, no, there's no amount of smartness to the item insertion so you can configure it such that each slot like can only be inserted from certain sides but that means that when you try to automate it to handle multiple recipes it's a real pain in the butt so effectively for automation purposes each rolling machine can only handle a single recipe but more realistically you only ever use the rolling machine to make like three different items so i'll just batch craft those three items um here's the cooper nickel coil and then I think like, okay, you can save one ingot while making on every other bucket. What a deal. Double your mine carts. Ah, there's actually an iron dupe in here. Uh, five ingots makes two mine carts. Two mine carts makes eight ingots. <laughs> um, if we needed more iron, that's a cheeky way to do it. I suspect there's an iron dupe using the smelter here with the iron bars as well. Um, but anyways, the cantho coil, I think, nope, you don't even need this item in this pack. So the cooper nickel coil, there's probably a dupe with this pressure plate as well. Yep. Um, so I guess the number one thing you use your rolling machine for is to dupe iron. Uh, well, yeah, practically speaking, there's very little you, you need to do with a rolling machine. You can dupe it with doors as well. Dang. Rolling machine, we should call it the duping machine. Anyways, off of two stacks of copper and nickel i have what stack and a half of cooper nickel coils which makes 24 blast furnaces this isn't a greg tech pack we're not going to need 24 industrial blast furnaces but that means that i never have to use that rolling machine again anyways i think we can with any luck just uh drop these recipes in and craft ourselves the blast furnace but for those of you that have been watching my uh say my omni factory series a blast furnace is more than just a blast furnace block. Let me start by making the furnace and then I'll uh, show you what else we need to put together a blast furnace. 
when you just place down the industrial blast furnace block and you open it, it says here incomplete multi block, and it'll show you the blocks you need. So it needs 34 total of these casings of some sort, either standard, reinforced, or advanced. We'll start with standard. The higher tier casing you use, the higher the temperature can go to. So if we look at these recipes, like we can make steel at 1000 heat, and I think the stand, each casing, you can mix and match casings, but uh, each casing gives a certain amount to the heating, and there's two air blocks on the inside. Um, a little hard to tell but the two innermost blocks are air blocks if you fill those in with lava you get another i think it's 500 the recipes that are i suspect all the 1000s we can do with 100 percent standard casings and then as the temperature goes up you need to more and more of the better casings all the way up to tungsten steel which might need all advanced casings i think advanced is the highest tier but um the refined steel recipe is a thousand, so we should be able to make do with just standards, which is good because standards are the che cheapest of the bunch. It looks like a blast furnace with all standard casings is a thousand and twenty heat. So if we, am I allowed to pickaxe a machine casing? I mean, it can't give me anything worse than a machine casing back, right? So, anyways, uh, th that's what that. Ow! 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 That's without the lava. So with the lava, it should be 1520, yeah. So I guess we can even do recipes up to 1500, including, what is that, titanium? We can make titanium in a full standard blast furnace? Cool. Um, also, unlike the Greg Tech blast furnaces, these blast furnaces do accept uh, overclockers, and just like the other machines, they run crazy fast with overclockers. Um, and lastly, all the I.O. is done in the controller block. There's no hatches or any of that to deal with. With the blast furnace set up, I think the next step is to make the calcium carbonate. So this uses slag. Um, right now, I have a whole bunch of the immersive engineering slag just from running our blast, our regular blast furnace. But if we ever run out of that, we can make th this slag quite easily by just recycling items. Like we can recycle, but you know, even if we don't duplicate items, we can recycle them using sand to make slag. Um, but we can then get a little bit cheeky right and make the buckets say in a rolling machine if we really really need iron spoiler we don't so uh the slides easily taken care of but the distilled water needs to be made in a let's see distilling regular water is build build a distiller so i think that is the distiller from um where's my caustic tone from immersive engineering and Hold on. My caustic tome is hiding from me. Let me find it. Uh, it should have the information on how to make a distiller. My caustic tome, tome has officially gone MIA. No clue where in the world it went, but uh, whatever. The distiller here is just made from a little bit of steel and iron. Quite cheap at this point. According to the book, the purpose of the distiller is to make water for, or distilled water and um salt from regular water so i suppose if we give it some regular water with just say aqueous accumulator um does that have a ui oh it's a very fancy ui let's uh let's just see what it does when we plug it in do i have fluid conduits of some form Do your thing. I'm gonna have to power it too. Power port. You can uh, actually power the power has to go into this block, but you can power it from any side of that block. Clever little thing to save yourself a couple little conduits. Not a big deal. But anyways, uh, I guess that's it. It just makes the sealed water. It doesn't even make salt. I was lied to. It said I get I get salt. I'm almost supposed to be salty that I don't get my machines back when I break it with a pickaxe. Um, anyways, this thing looks like it just makes distilled water plenty fast. We can bottle this in cells. If I get, can I just throw empty cells into this machine? Looks like the answer is yes, and it'll just turn them into distilled water cells for us. Oh, every now and then it does spit out a piece of salt. Good. That does mean I can be salty. Do, can we actually do this for anything? Not unless we wanted to make it rain. All right, well, uh, I think it came out of this port. 
I'll connect an item conduit to that, I guess. Does that even connect the conduits? Oh, I guess the salt spills onto the floor. Actually, how am I supposed to get the distilled water out of this thing? Um, neither of the ports, so this one looks like it's a fluid port, right? That one doesn't, it doesn't connect to items. This one also doesn't connect to items, but how am I supposed to get my distilled water out then? Let me try maybe a different type of item movement. I was looking around just like holding shift to see if any of the uh, blocks here would display an inventory. I moused over this and I found my Akashic film. Don't ask. Um, anyways, I made a item alligator. Don't know if this will work. Back, input, auto input. Doesn't look like it. Oh, how am I supposed to get items out of it? Does it have like a... There's side? Am I supposed to... Nah, it's not looking good. Oh, not flooded. I think the these slots, the fluid tank slots, or the fluid item slots, whatever, are just non-interactable on this machine. So, well, I, I guess they're non-interactable on just about all of these uh, immersive engineering machines. So I think I'm just going to have to push the distilled water into a fluid transposer, and then now we can fill cells in this. And this machine is interactable with uh, conduits and such. Yeah. All right, this will do. Uh, unfortunately, they don't stack here. That's a shame. We can then put a recipe into here to fill cells, and then these two recipes to make the calcium carbonate as well as to make the refined steel with calcium carbonate can go into the blast furnace. And if I order... 200 uh looks good to me oh and we're off to the races indeed yeah this thing is very fast it looks like it's using about 4,000 rf a tick while it's running what is it max input rate is 8,000 so maybe 8,000 rf a tick while it's running i don't know fast anyways it makes the calcium carbonate and then it can blast furnace that again to make refined steel um when machines are this fast, I'm happy to do all the steps on demand because, hey, I I just ordered, what was it, 200 refined steel ingots? It's going to take like a minute total to make them. Fine by me. Or not even a minute. The step is even faster. You're killing it. All right, good. So anyways, with uh, very easy access to, all, I, as far as I can tell, most of the components in, um, in what's this bot called again? I keep forgetting the name. Tech Reborn. I think we can tackle some of the higher tier Tech Reborn machines. So I want to make the, let's see, what is this? This is to make the recycler, followed by the uh, the thing that turns scrap into UU matter. Matter fabricator? Yeah. So this can allow us to make UU matter, which is something that we've seen in a lot of recipes. Like a lot of times I just look at, you know, how do we make something? And there just happens to be a UU matter recipe for it. But um, it's just a very convenient material that can be turned into a whole bunch of other useful things, even tungsten and iridium. Yeah, all, all this is good stuff. Um, but to make it, we need to make the fluid or the matter replicator, matter fabricator. Turns out it's not quite that simple. So to make this, we need a little bit of tungsten, some chrome, titanium, and iridium alloy. A nice feature of prototypes applied energistics version is that you can actually pin stuff from the crafting plan menu which is really convenient because oftentimes you generate a crafting plan you see what you're missing and you think wow i really wish i could pin these items well now you can all right so um i think tungsten said it just generates in the overworld and since we only need two ingots of it i'm down to just like look for a little bit of tungsten ore uh yeah it generates way at the bottom of the world it's relatively rare but uh that should be no big deal where does chrome come from? Chrome dust is probably a byproduct of something. Electrolyzing ruby, or can we get tiny chrome from something? No. Okay, so we need a, to get a fair number of rubies, process them through a... What was it? An industrial electrolyzer, which gives us one chrome per nine rubies. Yikes. Then for titanium, it took a little while for me to find how we're supposed to get it. We have to blast furnace the dust, but 
The dust doesn't come from, well, it comes from Brutile Ore, which as far as I can tell, we can't get until Tier 4 Void Ore Miner. Um, but there's a way to get the small piles of dust, and that is by electrolyzing Bauxite dust. So let's head back to the Overworld, mine ourselves a little bit of Bauxite for uh, Titanium, Ruby for Chrome, and Tungsten for, well, Tungsten. Bauxite's super easy to find, just sticks out like a sore thumb against all the stone. But man, does it slow to mine. I'm even, it's so slow that I have to place a block to stand on, otherwise it takes forever. And my pickaxe is fast. I mean, this is a 31 speed pickaxe. I can't imagine doing this with a, in fact, let's just test it with a lower. Uh, is it possible? Is iron high enough mining level? Oh my gosh. Please no. Thankfully, between void miner, or uh, vein miner, and a high speed pickaxe, this is not too painful but it's still not fast found everything except the tungsten according to jei this only generates at y level zero or one if we go to two at zero percent uh it says it's fake overworld but it's actually the fake overworld it's a world that the scanner actually copies chunks over from when you like generate this stuff so um i'm pretty sure the actual overworld that we're in matches the terrain generation of the fake overworld perfectly so if it's at Y level zero, I figured if I just like check here at bedrock level, um, we could see it. But it's also, I mean, it's not the same color as bedrock, right? It should stand out pretty clearly against it. But I haven't found any in any of the chunks we've generated. So instead of trying to do it this way, I think I'm actually just going to make the orchid. Um, I don't think we have to automate the orchid. At least I'm not going to for now. But uh, we'll just use the orchid to make, you know, a couple like... Uh, a couple dozen maybe um ores and that should get us i think i need like one or two tungsten ore to progress there's one weird component in the orchid that is the sun crystal so this requires a charged sun crystal to make it you make an empty one and then you throw it in the sun however no sun here um i think we this has to just be done in the overworld probably one of the ways that the orchid is gated to the overworld so uh, let's head back there. In fact, let's bring our bed with us because last time I left the overworld, it was nighttime. Let's see about making it daytime so that we can shine some light on our rock. Apparently, sleeping in the overworld causes your bed to explode. I mean, why Why? why would I? Why? Why? Uh, it didn't kill me, though, so that's nice. On the other hand, it means that I have to wait here until it's daytime to shine light on my sun crystal. Why would sleeping in the overworld cause my bed to explode? Come on. Now that the sun is out, just throw your sun crystal on the ground, let the light shine on it, and it'll slowly charge up at 19. I think it takes about 5 minutes. Um, I'm a little bit afraid of it despawning, so I think I'm just going to AFK for a couple minutes, pick it up every minute or two until it's done. Um, all the other stuff for the sun crystal I've already put into the uh, Petal Apothecary. After about 3 minutes, we are up to 29 durability on our sun crystal. I'm frankly sick of this hurry up and wait gameplay so uh look at that we have a fully charged sun crystal pour it all into the thing get our orchid the nice thing about the orchid is, is it can actually be run in any dimension so i think what i can do is um just swap this oh well right now we're not even getting all the items from this i guess some of the items are getting stuck whatever um i'll fix that later but uh we can take our orchid here pick it you know swap it with uh a vanilla the vanilla batania orchid and then just replace the mechanical user here placing end stone with one placing stone stone and we should be able to um yeah we should be able to automate well i guess we can even put we can leave both orchids down because one works on end stone one works on vanilla stone and then all we have to do is swap the mechanical user around to swap between the two uh orchid variants i redid my orchids a little bit to make it easier to control whether or not to turn them on so this lever now just disables the uh mechanical user that places the raw block if needed because right now my mana production can only support two orchids so either the overworld one the end one or the nether one which is obviously in the nether i can only run two of them at a time i mean i could technically run all three but then they run at reduced uh throughput so anyways um 
the uh, secondary change I made was that instead of using timers to turn on the mechanical user to mine the block, I used the block reader to read the block state. So the logic is the same as it was before, right? We read the block state and then we check whether it has a block and what the block is. If the block is both, or if uh, it has a block, so if this is true and the block is not either stone or endstone, then we um, send a redstone signal to turn on the mechanical user to mine it. These stone blocks here, as we saw, can take a while to mine. So uh, like this box, it is trying to mine it right now, but it's using a not the world's fastest pickaxe. I think I yeah, I put my auto smelt pick in here. Nothing that comes out of this is auto smeltable anyways, but uh, it's a binding speed 12 pickaxe and it will eventually get that box side ore. But um, in the time I spent setting it up, it's mined a little bit of stuff and really all I need was this one piece of tungsten because I think from one piece of tungsten, we can grinder it. We need manganese for anything. Nope. Um, we can grinder it to get, or even perhaps pulverizer it or maximum value sag mill it with a uh, grinding ball you get the tungsten dust and then that we can about in any of 30 billion different ways continuing on um the industrial blast furnace recipe to cook chrome uses 1700 heat which is a little bit hotter than our blast furnace is right now so let's just upgrade our entire blast furnace over to these reinforced blocks i think it's not terribly expensive um yeah have at it. Turns out I was using the wrong recipe for it as well. You can upgrade standard casings to reinforced casings, or you can just make reinforced casings from advanced frames, and this recipe uses uh, four times less stuff, because the advanced frame is basically free. So um, do it the cheap way, not the expensive way. Swapping the casings out then has gotten us up to 2200 heat, which is more than the 1700-ish we needed for uh, chromium gets. Perfect. Now to finish making our batter fabricator, we just need a little bit more ruby and bauxite, although those are now being automatically generated. We just have to wait a little while. But what really gets me, it's this, these two iridium alloy plates. So the implosion compressor, easy to make, TNT, easy to make. Um, but the iridium alloy ingot uses four iridium ingots each. And I, for the life of me, can't figure out how I'm supposed to get my early iridium. So uh, it's just iridium is just smelted from the ore. Um, or, well, can easily be made from the ore. But uh, I can't find a way to get the ore yet. It doesn't generate on any of the planets, or on any of the dimensions we have access to. It is made from a tier 4 or better void ore miner. I'm really hoping that's not the only solution. Um, like, all the pulverized variants, so the, of the ore, there's two variants. The Tech Reborn and the, uh, the Thermal Foundation one. The Thermal Foundation one comes from the Void Ore Miner. The Tech Reborn one can be crafted with UU Matter, but we need a little bit of Iridium to make the Matter Fabricator, right? I need, uh, what was it, like two plates? So I need eight Iridium. Um, it can also be made in the Fusion Controller with uh, stuff that I'm pretty sure we can get. However, even this requires a little bit of Iridium to uh, get into, and there might be more Iridium in here somewhere. Yeah, so um, my point is, I don't actually know how to get my first piece of, first like eight pieces of Iridium, short of doing the Void Ore Miner. And a tier four Void Ore Miner is literally two days of hurry up and wait away. So um, I don't know. Uh, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. So if you know how to get the Iridium, uh, aside from the stupid Void Ore Miner, I'd love to know. Otherwise, um we might be, there might be some waiting involved or uh, clever cheating to not wait. Who knows? Um, anyways, that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.